Chef Ramsay makes some of the wisest decisions when it comes to eliminating contestants. And well, sometimes it takes one split second to send someone packing. Like this time right here, where one contestant broke the hygiene protocol on the very first day of the season. What makes things even worse was the fact that he was an executive chef. But was this his only mistake? Well, let me introduce you to a guy who cooked risotto a million times, but failed to deliver just one. I think Gaurav Naveen, who was featured in the 12th season of Hell's Kitchen, had some serious issues. Not only did he do something very unhygienic, but he also got upset when Chef Ramsay rejected his dish. But what exactly led to his rejection? Well, let's find out. While Chef Ramsay keeps a close eye on how every contestant prepares their dish, in the case of Gaurav, something unusual caught Ramsay's eye. Instead of being surprised by the way he cooked the risotto, he was shocked by a finger licking good moment he had while preparing it. Now, this is the polar opposite of what Chef Ramsay believes in. When it comes to maintaining standards, Ramsay once said that he strives for perfection. And although this is conveyed in a very bullish way, it's exactly what cooking is all about. Considering how the famous chef always seeks excellence, Gaurav failed to live up to his expectations. During the service, while Gaurav boasted about cooking risotto a million times, he had failed to serve even one that was cooked right. The first risotto he sent was way too soupy and had far too much black pepper. It's so runny, you can't even spot the rice in there. With no appetizers out yet, Chef Ramsay was frustrated as hell. But then, Gaurav made Chef Ramsay even more furious by doing this. Oh no, hey you, hey, does anyone have any respect for the customer sat behind me? I mean, what exactly was he expecting would happen? The risotto was swiftly rejected and Gaurav was left fuming over Chef Ramsay's decision. However, come to think of it, what if Gaurav hadn't made this mistake? Would he have actually cooked his risotto correctly? Hmm, well, I guess we'll never know. Gaurav was very upset with Ramsay rejecting his dish, and this is what he had to say. You gonna not take my risotto just because I checked the rice and then finally clean my finger with my tongue? Okay, I can't believe he said that. I don't think he thought there was anything wrong with what he was doing. Well, licking your fingers clean right in the middle of a service? That sounds absolutely revolting, right? But Gaurav didn't believe so. In fact, back at the dorms, he wanted to make some serious claims when he said this. We all have put finger in the food. We all have done it. Uh, I don't think I could vouch for that, but one Reddit user pointed towards the chef's Indian roots as a reason behind his actions. On the other hand, according to another user, Gaurav, in an article, mentioned that he had very little experience with Indian food. Moreover, many also wished that he stayed over Nicole Rutz since she also basically gave up while cooking the scallops. However, soon after, I came across another comment that said that Gaurav licking his finger wasn't the only mistake he made. And yes, just like this user pointed out, Gaurav never actually sent one good risotto to the pass. Which is exactly what the other contestants felt as well. Here's a little sneak peek of the discussion that took place at the dorms. A lot of lobster came out like, you know, it was yeah, horrible at first. But I got held up. As for Chef Ramsay, he was so disgusted that he just couldn't snap out of it. I think I have all the talent, the passion, attitude. You forgot fingers. So, like, you know how you get a limited amount of time on Hell's Kitchen to prove your worth? Well, Gaurav failed to do so. It came to no surprise that soon after, Chef Ramsay decided to eliminate him. And as Gaurav left, Chef Ramsay only had one comment to make. I have got nowhere else to go with you, and I've barely met you. Damn, that was really rough. But although Gaurav's time on the show was painfully short, he definitely found success post Hell's Kitchen. In 2022, Gaurav opened his restaurant Bombay to Berg in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And let me tell you, it became an instant hit for its Indian food. Moreover, the restaurant has way more to offer. Go ahead and hear it from Gaurav himself. Wow. So most of our dishes are very geared towards vegetarian and vegan population, but we still have the meats, as you can see. According to Pittsburgh Magazine, Gaurav worked in corporate kitchens for 15 years around the world, including the Carnival Cruise Lines. After getting inspired by his global travels and from his fellow expert chef Kosti Vishwanath, Gaurav opened the restaurant to bring the different regions and flavors of Southeast Asia to the people of Pittsburgh. And boy, did it work like a charm. Well, considering how he's running a full-fledged restaurant now, I could only hope that he's graduated from his finger-licking days. But this next contestant was so inconsistent with his work that Chef Ramsay made him eat his mistake. Wondering how that's possible? Christian, stop f***ing me around! Well, in season 11, Christian Rosati ended up giving one bad service, and this service was enough to cut his dreams short and send them straight back home. 
Honestly, the reason why we couldn't get to understand Christian as a chef was because on the first day, he worked tableside and on the second day, he was eliminated. That's it, short and sweet. Well, maybe I wouldn't say that it was sweet. Several viewers couldn't understand why Chef Ramsay didn't keep him over Jeremy Madden. But as Stephen Knight famously said, consistency is what every great chef strives for. And that night, consistency was nowhere close to being Christian's friend. You see, Christian, who was working with Michael Landon at the fish station, screwed up on the scallops quite a few times. The first order of scallops he brought to the pass turned out to be like this. Rubber. And then, he went ahead and refired his dish without actually communicating with his partner, Zach Womack. Knowing that scallops don't take very much time to cook, one always has to wait for the other's signal. But what got into Christian that night is something I guess we'll never know. Oh, look, he's fucking scallops are cooked! Yes, guys. Sorry, guys. It wasn't just about miscommunication or inconsistency anymore. At this point, Christian was just worse than a train wreck and he knew it. Dude, you gotta sear it. Flip them. I am flipping them, guys. I told you I'm having a hard time. I apologize. And after a number of tries, when his refire took forever to reach the pass, Chef Ramsay got pissed. This is a fucking job. There's just nothing coming out. We are fucking struggling. But thankfully, this round of scallops was accepted. Which makes me wonder, imagine if this batch was overcooked or much worse raw, Christian's time on Hell's Kitchen would have been even shorter. But wait, let's not get too excited. Now, just because one batch of scallops got accepted, doesn't mean that the next one would, right? Once he got to the next order, he was once again late in setting the scallops. But this time, in order to get things moving, Jeremy came in as a helping hand, but Christian rejected it. Maybe he wanted to redeem himself? But also, maybe he just didn't trust Jeremy. Whatever the reaction was, Christian ended up screwing it up anyway. He brings up scallops. <laughs> Fucking rubber. These bunch of scallops sealed Christian's fate for sure. Touch them. And despite a strong plea, Christian had to leave. Give me a jacket, big boy. Time is done. One Reddit user felt that the reason why the blue team was awful in season 11 was because the strongest chefs kept getting eliminated over the weaker ones. If the stronger ones had stayed longer, the blue team would have definitely been far better. Among the strong chefs, one user named Christian along with Dan Ryan, Michael Langdon, and Anthony Rodriguez. Now, I don't entirely agree with this user that these four contestants would have made a difference. Because, well, the blue team seemed to be broken right from the beginning of the season. And Christian was no different from the others. But this contestant chose a very special dinner service to screw things up. Do you really think Chef Ramsay would let it pass? Of course not. Meet Lewis Curtis from Season 8, whose time ran out because he struggled to make a dish that he's never made before. But guess what? Curtis ended up receiving quite a bit of support from the fan base. Several viewers found his elimination to be unfair, and many others felt that he was robbed of his opportunity. On top of that, he wasn't even nominated. But before I get into how fair or unfair his elimination truly was, let's see what put him in this position in the first place. I think Curtis could have dealt with his failure if he had asked for help from his teammates. After all, working as a team is also what Chef Ramsay looks for in a chef. However, in the second episode, Curtis struggled from the very first table and this really ticked off Chef Ramsay. What happened is, the first sushi that Curtis made was improper and on top of that, he served it on a dirty plate. Look at that, look, look at that, come here you! It's not good enough for me! Because of his poor performance, Chef Ramsay had to do something that he hates to do, which is to send out an incomplete order. Service please, go with that, come back from the sushi, god forbid. Two hours into the service, Curtis was still struggling with his sushi. And well, this time, he sent in proper cuts to the pass. Ramsay was tired of him dragging the blue team down, and for that, the famous chef kicked him out of the kitchen. I've got the sushi now with no wasabi! You! Fuck off out of here! Of course, his performance got the best of him. But what many viewers didn't like about him was when he tried to persuade the blue team to nominate Boris Polshuk instead of himself. For what reason should they nominate Boris when he only made one mistake? Nevertheless, Boris was still nominated along with Raj Branston, and surprisingly, Chef Ramsay agreed with the nomination. Moreover, he also called Vinnie Accardi down for the waiting table incident. As we all know, the famous chef is full of surprises, and just like that, he shocked everyone by doing this. Person leaving Hell's Kitchen is Curtis. Now that we saw what went down, let's go back to talking about whether his elimination was justified. I mean, on Hell's Kitchen, there's no better judge than Chef Ramsay, and this user seems to be in agreement with his decision. And you know what? Sushi isn't honestly that hard to make. One does have to be patient and be on point with their knife skill since every roll has to be cut evenly. 
Also, the ingredients do have to be balanced, but of course, no one could be a pro on their very first day of learning, right? So whether Curtis's elimination was just or not could be pretty debatable. But one thing that I could say for sure is that if he did survive that night, I don't think he would have stayed for long. As Paul Theroux said, cooking requires confident guesswork and improvisation, experimentation and substitution, as well as dealing with failure and uncertainty in a creative way. And Curtis didn't really fit this criteria. However, in the short time that he was on the show, Curtis managed to make a few fans. Take a look at this comment right here, which mentions Curtis leaving the show as the saddest moment in Hell's Kitchen history. Now, I wouldn't really side with this statement, but I do have to agree that his exit interview was pretty heartbreaking. I mean, just take a look at this. I'm sorry Daddy gave him his best, but I swear to God I'll make it up to you. <sighs> it's not often you see someone feeling so worthless and beaten down, huh? But this next contestant, who is the first Alaskan to compete on Hell's Kitchen, turned out to be the first elimination of the season. So, did this meal prep businesswoman deserve an early boot from the competition? Apparently, this elimination left several viewers unhappy. Of course, the contestant I'm talking about is Ava Heron from season 20. While good food never fails to impress the famous chef no matter how simple it is, Ava failed to impress Ramsay not once, but twice. During the signature dish challenge, Ava served Chef Ramsay her flab of chicken, but it turned out to be very flat. Not only did the dish have undercooked rice, but it also had bland broccoli. Your broccoli will be so much more tasty than that. And right now, it's lacking flavor, young lady. You could say it was more like Ava's bland chicken, and this one actually sparked off a few memes on the internet. Well, it looks like the dish got people talking, but it wasn't in a positive light. However, like I said earlier, Ava then screwed up her salmon dish, which she presented during the alcohol challenge. Ava really wanted to impress Chef Ramsay after failing her signature dish, but this time, she did miserably. In fact, she set her station on fire. Well, almost. Later, when the time came to choose the three best and worst dishes, without a doubt, Ava's dish was chosen as the worst one. And what was the reason? It had raw fish. Remember how she said Alaskans were known for their salmon, but it would be a shame if she screwed up? Sadly, Ava's fear came true, and she brought shame upon herself. Ava not only served raw fish, but she even paired it with the worst possible sauce. Bourbon marinated grilled pineapple with uh, soy olive oil Worcestershire salmon. I mean, Worcestershire sauce on salmon? Now that's something I don't even want to try. But have you tried something like that before? Well, Chef Ramsay was left with only one thing to say. Salmon's undercooked, you can yes, see. Chef. That's raw salmon there as well. After making such an inexcusable mistake, it only made sense for Ava to leave the show. However, several viewers thought that Matthew Francis Johnson should have been eliminated instead of her. I mean, isn't serving raw chicken worse? Well, that's at least how I feel. But with viewers having mixed feelings about Ava's elimination, a post on Reddit was made about who should have gone home first. And what do you know, Ava seems to be the clear-cut loser. Her dish wasn't only raw, but also didn't look appetizing. And that's the advantage Matthew had over her. But this next contestant, who claimed to be an executive chef, literally butchered the meat station. Well, here comes a contestant from season 21, who not only sucked in most of the challenges, but also screwed up the second dinner service entirely. I'm of course talking about O'Shea Lolly. Now, this contestant had a lot of support from viewers when he promised to be the next Luis Petroza, Rhea Longhi, or even Sterling Wright. However, all of these hopes went up into flames when he got eliminated early on into the show. Well, for one, I think this dude was plain stupid. I mean, he didn't even know that lobster legs had meat. But wait, didn't he say during the whole lobster prep challenge that he used to work at a lobster restaurant? How the heck did he not know about the meaty legs then? Also, wasn't he an executive chef? You know how many lobster legs I've thrown away over the years? Gosh, why did he have to butcher the lobster? Where's your claw? In the shelf, yeah. What a shame, that's staying out. I mean, that's just unacceptable. Well, you see, O'Shea's flame was high for all the wrong reasons, and because of that, he lost his chance to prove his worth to Chef Ramsay. And it wasn't even about the lobsters. In truth, O'Shea's work at the meat station was nothing but a disaster. At first, his inconsistent timing frustrated his teammates, and then when he was finally ready, all his Wellingtons looked overcooked. While Chef Ramsay was frustrated with O'Shea for not giving him an answer on the Wellingtons, he made a huge mistake by walking them to the pass. But wait, didn't his team tell him that it was overcooked already? However, O'Shea only wanted to do things his way. That night, there was a couple celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary in the house, and Chef Ramsay wanted to end the night on a high note for them. But O'Shea annoyed him when he failed to give a time on the couple's order. 
Oh, Shay didn't even ask me that. How long? He's asking. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. If you really thought that was it, then wait till you see this. Looks like he screwed up again. Oh, f Get out! When O'Shea was eliminated, one Reddit user wondered if Chef Ramsay did the right thing by booting him instead of Nicole Gomez. What O'Shea really had to do was communicate well with Nicole because both of them were working together at the same station, and it only made sense to do so. But O'Shea had his own plans. On top of that, he didn't answer Chef Ramsay twice when he asked him about the timing on the meet. So, as a matter of fact, if you see, I think Chef Ramsay made the right decision. However, when one of the users blamed O'Shea for Nicole's raw chicken, one user replied that O'Shea had nothing to do with her poor performance. Nicole performed poorly on her own. Now, I get that each contestant has to be responsible for their own station and the food that they send out. But in hindsight, I think both of these contestants were responsible for the raw chicken particularly. I mean, there should have been good communication between the two so that Nicole could have timed it better. But it's another thing that Nicole should have known how long it takes to cook chicken, right? What do you guys think? Why don't you give me a little hand to sort out this blame game? While speaking about the raw chicken, whose fault do you think it was? Was it just Nicole or both Shay and Nicole's, or just Shay's fault? I'm totally confused. But who knows, there may be more times when Chef Ramsay eliminates contestants at the drop of a hat in the future.